Hey ladies, it's Ashley Shepard and I'm just a few minutes behind here. Um, I appreciate you being patient with me. We had a little family dinner and got the kiddos to bed and so we're going to hop into chapters four and five of Fresh Brood Life. I hope that you are enjoying this study. Make sure you can hear me okay and everybody hops on. I am absolutely loving it. Let me make sure. Yay! It's always good when you can hear me. All right, I'm just going to give it just a second, let everybody hop on, and we're going to dive into chapters four and five. And chapter four is on embracing your beauty, and chapter five is on anger. So isn't that funny that those two chapters are right after each other? Because sometimes embracing my beauty makes me angry. Can I get an amen to that? Um... So, if you're hopping on, tell me where you're from. We're going to just give it like 30 more seconds, and then we're just, I'm going to dive right in. Dive right in. Hey, Nicole. Sweet baby girl. All right. Okay, if you've got your books, awesome. Open them up, or if you've got a journal, if not, just, just hang with me for just a few minutes. This is going to be kind of a quicker video. Um... And I'm just going to jump right in. Okay, chapter four, embracing your beauty. Man, does this scream identity or what? This chapter really spoke to me. And if you know anything about my journey or my life, you know that I have, I have a huge weight loss journey. I have lost 100 pounds in, in about five years. And so I have, when, I, when I'm reading this chapter of embracing beauty, I have been 280 pounds and I've been 100 and you know 25 130 pounds and so I have went on this journey of putting all of my security and who I am in my pant size and how much I weighed and how my clothes fit and so as I'm reading her chapter and literally the very first part of her chapter when she talks about women are literally pulled in two directions by their feelings about beauty and man I was like that's so true because we don't want to admit that you know we we want to look a certain way or you know we put makeup on to look a certain way or whatever we don't want to admit those things but then again we have this strong desire to 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 to, to be beautiful um, but then when people compliment us we don't want to seem braggy by saying, oh, thank you. I mean, yes, you know, it didn't really take long to do my makeup. I mean, you know, nobody wants to seem braggy or too confident. But then again, we don't want to seem like everything's wrapped up in our beauty. And so there's this in between, I feel like, that women try to hang out in. And she called it no man's land, the zone on the fence between the lines pulled in two different directions. And I have been both of these women. I have been the woman who was 280 pounds and didn't want to leave my house because people knew how much weight I had gained. And so literally, because I was so overweight and exhausted, that controlled me. And then I have lost 100 pounds and been to the point where it, cons it consumed me because I wanted to make sure I continued to look the way I was. And so it really hasn't been recently, over, really over the last probably year and year and a half, I have had some a lot of healing in really defining who I am. And the reality is it has nothing to do with my pant size. It has nothing to do with how bloated I feel. It has nothing to do with what I look like in a bathing suit. But my identity is wrapped up in being obedient to Jesus Christ first. But it took, I mean, over the course of the last 10 years, to really get to that point. And so she's really, she really opens up on page 68. And I love this quote, seeking to embrace our beauty will wake us up because we have to face all of the parts of ourselves that we have deemed ugly and worth and worthless. We have to confront old pains and wounds and we have to make a choice as to whether we will give way to new growth and life or we will stay dead. And I have been both of those people. I have been 280 pounds and looking at my husband saying, just get used to this. Like, this is just who I am. I can't lose weight. I am stuck. 
And then I've been on the other flip of that where I've lost all that weight, but then it's like, well, who am I? Like, I, I, I'm different. I'm, I'm not that person I was, you know? And so I've had that moment of, well, I'm just going to stay here. I'm going to lay down and die. Like, I can't lose weight. And then I've been where I was really growing and thriving. And so I think that the realization as women is to just stop for a second and ask ourselves, just like she encouraged us to do in this book, she encourages us to interview ourselves. And it's almost like, and I love Tracy that you said that, she had to stop and journal and, and, and have a good cry and I did the same thing, is when you get your journal out, like she encourages us to, and you start writing, you can just be real and say, you know what? Where is this coming from? Why do I have this sense of unworthiness because of I had to buy a bigger pant size at the store? You know, why am I depressed for three days because I tried on a bathing suit? Like, where is this weight of, of who I am because of how I feel or what I look like? Where is that coming from? And she actually encourages us to journal to our mother about her beauty and the lessons you learned from her. She encourages us to go to the spa, to take some time for yourself between you and God. And I think that that encouragement will really change a lot because here's what happens when we put a lot of our, our, um, our value and our worthiness and what we look like on the outside, it's, it's consuming. You have social media, you've got everybody's highlight reel on social media, people working out and losing weight and feeling great and all their, you know, beautiful pictures where they just look size two and you're thinking, oh goodness, you know, or their before and after pictures after they have a baby and they're like, went from a size, you know, six to a four. I gained like 80 pounds with both my pregnancies. Um, and so, you know, you see those things on social media and you're just like, ah, oh, you know, I mean, think about it. It's all up in our faces. And if you're like me and you're in my age, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, Think of your daughters and your granddaughters, what they're facing and what they're going to face and how it's always in their face. This comparison, this look like this, do this, be this, um, and their weight and their worthiness and their value is wrapped all up in the, those things, the beauty. Um, and they're not embracing their beauty. They are like literally wrestling with their beauty because they're wrestling because of comparing and all of those things out there. But here's what happens when you dive into the Word of God or you open up your journal and you start spending time with Jesus and you start to journal and you start to ask, interview yourself. I loved that part of this, this embracing your beauty is when she talks about how to interview yourself and what that looks like because it's, it's tough. It is tough. And when we sit down and we interview ourselves, you have to ask, where is all this coming from? Why, why does my pant size define who I am? Why, why do I worry so much when I go out in public to make sure that I've got my makeup on or I look a certain way? Like, what is it? Am I trying to please someone? And is it, is it, you know, is it something that, you know, I just desire to do because I love to do my makeup and I just, I love, you know, you really start to have, ask those questions. Um, but on page uh, 71, she says this. We believe that if we could eliminate the problems we see in our bodies, then we could really accept ourselves, right? Have you ever thought that, gosh, if I could just be a size six or if I could just, you know, look a certain way in my bathing suit, all would be well with the world. What an illusion this is. Instead of acceptance, we are drawn into a downward spiral of eating disorders and self-rejecting behaviors that leave us with complete disdain for how we look. We have this false sense of worthiness in our life. If only, if only, if only. I have said this before and I will say it again. If we get wrapped up in putting our value in our beauty or our worthiness in our pant size, we are going to miss everything because we are going to be so focused in what we're not that we are not focused on who we are and we are daughters of the king. You see, Jesus didn't create you in your mother's womb so intimately and so perfectly. And it says in Psalm 139 that he knew you when you were under the earth, like under the earth. And so if you believe that he created you and you were in God's image, where is it? What At what point in our lives as women or young girls, whenever that is, 
at what point do we have to stop for a second and say, when did that shift? When did that, have you ever seen that little meme or that flyer of the little girl where she has her hands in the air and, she, and it says she's in a bathing suit and her hair's all wet and she's doing this and it says, remember her? Question mark. It's actually the background of my laptop computer screen because we had this freedom as a young girl. It didn't matter if we were a little bit overweight or, you know, if we weren't perfect at everything or didn't look a certain way. We didn't care if we matched when we were young girls. At what point did we start focusing on other people before we started focusing on the one who beautifully designed us? What was it? Like, if you can just go back, what was that first point? I know for me, I mean, I can look back and, 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 and many a times I would get made fun of at school. And it was that first realization that I was wearing hand-me-downs. Um, I actually wrote it in my book in the self-worth chapter. And it was that realization of, hmm, so I'm not perfect and I'm wearing hand-me-downs. Like, there, um, there's something wrong with me. And I would go home and, you know, ask mom to take me shopping. And, of course, you know, that didn't happen. And so... And then I, you know, so just like she talked about, we're kind of held hostage. You know, maybe we have those voices of the past. Maybe, maybe there were words spoken, spoken over us about our appearance or our beauty that, that is so loud that we can't hear what the Lord is saying because their voices are too loud. And you're replaying them in your mind over and over and over. And at the end of the day, you don't even know who you are and you don't even know where your worth and value comes from. And so you really are being held hostage. And so um, I want to end with this about Embrace Your Beauty because I could talk all night long about this because my own journey of, you know, being almost 300 pounds and feeling so unworthy and thinking my husband's going to find another woman because he's embarrassed of how much weight I had gained. And I was living in this false sense of who I was and just, you know, all of those things. And so I was I was really living a lie. And it, the lie really derived from my own thoughts about myself. When waking up in the morning and calling myself fat and just couldn't wait to crawl back in my bed because then I wouldn't have to worry about how I felt in my clothes when I lay down. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's just me that had those thoughts. But I still struggle with some of those things. But when, it, when, when they come in, I grab my journal and I write about them. And when I write about those things... What happens is those lies start to become transparent because that's what they are, complete lies. And in my book, I, I don't, I don't want to keep referencing my book, but in my book, that is the process we go through is we, we start, first of all, revealing that there is, that this is a lie. Second of all, now it's time to, to, to claim it a lie in your life. Now we've got to replace it with what's true. And what's true is that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. That you were created for a destiny, a purpose. That, you know, that you want to replace it with God's word. That's the truth in your lives. And so if we walk around with this false sense of reality and these lies going on in our heads, and, 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 and we believe them for so long it becomes a habit, and as adults, habits are hard to break. And so we have a challenge here as women. And if you have daughters, or you, if maybe you're like me and you're raising boys, but you have nieces, or you have friends that have daughters, but you're an influence in their life. If you are around little girls from age baby all the way up, it's time for us to rise up. It's time for us to, 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 to wake up and start modeling what it looks like to be confident in who we are because we were made by Jesus. And we are daughters of the King of Kings. And so regardless of how I feel in my clothes or what my pants size says or, you know, what, what the doctor writes down when they write down my weight, none of that defines who I am. And it's not going to make me any more secure if that number changed or if I bought a pants size down or if I looked skinny in my bathing suit. None of that is going to matter because I'm secure in who I am because of my creator, not because of what the world has created. And so ask yourself, am I living in, in the world? Am I, am I diving into this comparison on social media and diving into, I'm not going to be satisfied until I'm X, Y, Z. 
if you are living in that lie, it's time to wake up because what she says in page 77, I'm always surprised by women who want their daughters to have a strong sense of their beauty and yet are unwilling themselves to work on showing them the way. It's not about, you know, it's not about necessarily, oh, well, you know, you've got to have confidence. It doesn't matter, you know, what other people think. It doesn't matter how you feel in those clothes. You know, God created you. And you're, you're, you're speaking those words to your daughter or nieces or the, the girls in your, your influence. But you're not living that out. They're watching you look in the mirror. They're watching your face look defeated. You're not living in victory. You're living in defeat because you're allowing your value to be weighted on how you feel in your clothes or comparing someone else's highlight reel to what you look like. And so we have a challenge to really rise up and redefine beauty, redefine what beauty is. And I have been on every spectrum. I've been 280 pounds, I've been 120 pounds. I've had full face acne to where my face, it was horrible acne after my kids. And then I've had clear skin. I, I mean, I have, I have, I have felt like I didn't want to leave my house because I felt like I was so ugly. And then, I, you know, I have felt on the other end, I have felt beautiful. And what's, what's the in-between? I mean, why can't we be confident in who we are regardless of what we look like? Why can't we walk with our head up regardless of, of what our physical appearance looks like? Because we've got to rest our identity in Jesus Christ and the one who created us. And the only way to do that is to eliminate social media, eliminate all that white noise. Get on social media, see friends and family, then get off. Stop copying on newsfeed. So you're just allowing the enemy whisper those lies as you scroll, right? Because you are allowing yourself to live inside of what the world has created instead of living in what God has created. And that is my heart for you tonight. And I get fired up about this, as you can tell. And here's what she says as, as I end this, because I loved this part of it. Um, this right here is going to end it perfectly. And this is what I want to say, say to you tonight. And this is what I hope that you take away. Because I'll say this before I read this. Jesus loves you because he loves you because he loves you because he loves you because he loves you. This is what she says. For whatever reason, we've thought that God seems absent in our beauty discussions. The fresh brewed truth is that God doesn't care. He doesn't look at beauty the same way we do. Trust me. He knows beautiful and he created and he loves us as we are. His love and care aren't affected one ounce by the size of our blue jeans. The way our nose slopes up or down or how much dental work we've had or haven't done. His love isn't diminished if we wear the wrong dress to the party, have no skill or time to apply makeup, or even if we hate exercise. God simply loves us, which also means that if we decide to get in shape or find the time to take a shower or learn to wear colors that look nice on us, God still loves us. We haven't gone up in his eyes or improved in his estimation of us. He just loves us the same as he always has and always will. He loves us because he loves us because he loves us. And if we grab a hold of how much value and how worthy you are and how valuable and how beautiful and how amazing you are because of Jesus, not because of what the world has created, but because of what Jesus has created, you have to live in that. You have to walk in that. You have to read that. You have to speak that. You have to write that. You see, you've created habits and lies in your life, but ask yourself, are you going to get an action to reverse those and call it what it is, a flat out lie, but you've got to put some action behind, behind creating those new habits in your life. By, by, by journaling the, 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 the gifts that God's blessed you with, journaling the great things about. I mean, I can look at the back of my legs and say, man, <laughs> it looks like, you know, a little bumpy back there in the back of my legs, you know. I mean, I, I was almost 300 pounds. I had two babies. And my whole stomach is just stretch marks and stretch marks. And Like I lift it up and it looks like, you know, my kids could play their Lego cars on my stomach because of, of, of the stretch marks I have from having babies. And there are days I'll look in the mirror and I'm like, that's so gross. But what if I looked in the mirror and thought, 
man, what a blessing that I was able to carry two healthy children. And now I'm running around with two healthy boys. You see, it's a shift in mindset and it's, it's, an, and it's an intentionality to, to, to open up the word of God, to grab your journal and to say, all right, Jesus, my challenge is on. Because my worth and my value is going to be rested in who I am in you and not rested in how I feel, what I look like, someone else's opinion, or social media. I am going to rest in who I am in you, your confidence, your security, how much you feel loved is not going to be rested in a man or a friendship or a relationship or a pant size. It is going to be rested in Jesus because he loves you and he created you for him. He didn't create you to fit in that size six jeans and prance around on Facebook and take pictures. He didn't create you to put on that, that tiny little bathing suit and look great at the, at the pool around your kids. He created you to get in the pool and create memories with your family. And so that is my heart. That is my heart for you tonight. Um, I hope this is still working because it says on the computer that it's frozen. Hang on just a second make sure I'm still working here. Can you hear me? Okay. Can you hear me okay? Give me a shout out if y'all if can hear me. Okay, good. You can still hear me. Okay. All right. I'm all fired up. Can you tell? Um... The next chapter, the last chapter that we're going to touch base on is your anger, interviewing your anger. Man, that was a hard chapter to, to read. Um, man, this, this last chapter was, was really tough. And um, as we finish out the beauty chapter, I'll just say one last thing. Let's all challenge and encourage each other. No matter what, Jesus loves us. And so as women, as the beautifully designed community, we have the responsibility to speak that into each other's life. But not only that, it's keeping each other accountable. It's sh shooting a text to, to your friends and family and saying, I hope you know how loved you are. I hope you know how beautiful you are. And so let's rise up together, keep each other accountable, and let's start facing the person in the mirror and then picking up the phone or texting or messaging and helping other women face the woman in the mirror and remind them that the woman they're looking back at in the mirror is the person that Jesus created so perfectly. He beautifully designed you. And that is a really big part of my book. And so I'm super excited about you guys um, having a chance to order that on Friday, a week from tomorrow on September 1st. Um, that is a big part of my book. So definitely get my book. So she talks about interviewing ang you know, anger. And it's funny because at first when I read this chapter, I'm like, well, I don't really deal with that anger. I don't really deal with the anger issues. And as I'm reading this chapter, I'm like, whoa. Maybe I do. Anybody else feel that in the anger chapter where you're like, oh, I'm not angry. And she shares a story how she talks about how we hide things. Like we get really frustrated at a lot of little things and we hide them and we keep them down deep inside. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're, you didn't get the ice cream you wanted or, you know, the smallest thing happened and you're filled with rage. And when she talked about that, the Lord was like, Bam, slap me in the face, Ash. Like, let's convict you for what you did just last week. And that's exactly what happened to me. My husband frustrated me on Saturday. Did not say a word. Was trying to deal with it on my own, in my heart, and in my mind. Well, the Bible says that even our hearts, our own hearts will deceive us. The Bible says that. And so I'm trusting my own heart and my own mind to deal with this issue and frustration with my husband. And at the end of the day, that was the wrong thing. Because I'm replaying this, this thing in my mind and it wasn't real. Like that's really not what happened, right? But in my mind it happened and it got big in my head. And it got big in my heart. But I kept it in. I kept it in. And then Sunday rolls around and we're fussing and fighting. And he's going to have to speak in front of the whole church because he's fixing, fixing to go to Asia on a mission trip for two weeks. And, you know, he's, I know that he's about to walk in the sanctuary and talk. And, and he kind of walked away from me. And I was like, hey, I'm going to nursery. Not that you cared. And I was super sarcastic. And, like, all this stuff was coming out. I'm like, what is wrong with me? I did exactly what this book said. Exactly. I had built this anger inside of me thinking I could deal with it on my own. And at the end of the day, the smallest thing made me nuts. I do it with my kids. It's so crazy. 
and I love what she talked about, the check engine light. When the check engine light comes on, you know, we need to get it fixed. We do it with our car. But, you know, like a good, good mechanic, our job is to look under the hood, do some investigating to find out what is causing our light to come on. What is it? We treat our souls the same way that we treat our cars. We pay little attention until something breaks down. We really don't care what's going on under the hood as long as the car is still running. Oh, it's not a big deal. I'll just kind of hide it. I'll just put it in my spot down here in my heart and just let it settle and, you know, fester a little bit and then get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? And then all of a sudden something breaks down and I flip out on my husband. And if they don't, perhaps we'll make it to the auto shop before everything falls apart. Wow. What a great analogy. I mean, can I get an amen? It's like, why, why do we do that? I do that with my kids. I'm like, oh, I'll just... It's okay. It's okay. It's, it's you know, don't make it a big deal. Don't make it a big deal. And then they do the smallest thing, and I turn around like, bah! and they're like, scary mommy, you know? No, really. So I mean, you know, it happens. But the reality is this: is we have got to take control. And what a great reminder is to, to our check engine light comes on, awaken our hearts, awaken our souls. Grab your journal. Grab the Word of God. You see, the Word of God is not there for when we set our alarms to have our 10-minute Bible study or when we grab our book to read that we're doing with the Beautifully Designed Community. The Bible is there to, um, to help us just get through those moments, those moments where you feel like you're going nuts and you went off on your family or, you know, you're, you're about to go off on your family. A lot of times what happens, we pick up the phone and we call a friend or we get on Facebook and we dream about other people's highlight reels and think, man, she's got it good. Wish I had a husband like that or wish I had a life like that. And we either play the comparison game or we're calling like 12 other people to get advice. We are not picking up the word of God and saying, Lord, is this real? Am I making this a big deal? Like, speak to me. Like, opening up the Word of God. Or maybe it's journaling and just throwing it up on a page and, and getting it out so you realize what's lies and what's true. And she talks about interviewing and surveying the situation. I love that part. The interview process is critical because the source of our anger is often hidden or obscured. You see, on Sunday morning, I really wasn't mad at my husband because he walked away from me while he was going to the sanctuary and I was working nursery. I was mad at him because he frustrated me the day before. And that little, like, made me go off. And so really understanding what is the source. You have to be a tough interviewer. And she does say sometimes you have to pick up the phone, but call, don't call your yes friend. That's going to tell you what you want to hear. You've got to call a friend that's going to speak truth and that's going to tell you where you need to get better. So my heart in this chapter is on page 94 she says this women will do almost anything to keep from feeling powerless we wear many hats we keep a lot of things juggled up in the air we keep control we keep composure we slap the smile on our face and then when something happens a lot of thing happens and then something else happens and it piles on and it piles on and we're keeping it juggling and okay one arms down okay the next arms down and then a month goes by or two months goes by maybe it's a year that goes by and you absolutely lose it and then you think oh my gosh I need to get on medication I'm going crazy um, what is wrong with me <sighs> you've just not dealt with what you've had to experience maybe you're experiencing life changes maybe you've you know lost a loved one a bad circumstance cancer um, a new baby I mean postpartum depression I had it after my second son and was depressed for almost eight months and didn't even know it I should have been on medication and I just didn't know what it was it's was horrible um, so the reality is, is is we juggle and we control and if, if we're not in control we feel powerless but at the end of the day we are powerless without Jesus Christ we need Jesus to help us in these situations we've got to stop saying yes to everything and controlling everything and really focusing on what the Lord wants us to focus on in our individual lives and so if there's life happening or a bad circumstance or an issue or storm or maybe you're just busy and your schedules nuts that's been me the last couple weeks traveling to all these different states and doing these things and I mean I'm exhausted and, and preparing this for you guys and you know my book and all of those things I'm exhausted 
And so that's been the biggest source of life for me is picking up my journal and allowing Jesus, you know, allowing myself to be powerless so I can grab onto God's power and say, all right, Jesus, it's all you now. <laughs> it is all you. I have put this book in Jesus's hands. I have put this whole process in his hands. I have, you know, I know I live a full life and a busy schedule, but I lately I have completely dependent on Christ. And because of that, I've not gone crazy, except for my husband. Now, that whole annoyance is I kind of went crazy on him. But when it comes to my own schedule, you got to take control of your own schedule at the end of the day. And you've got to let go of what those things that you can't control. Focus on what you can control and stop focusing on what you can't. And allow the Lord to just replenish your soul and refresh your heart and to give you a new perspective. Because sometimes we just need that shift in a mindset. And we need that scripture to pour some life back into our hearts to where we can pick back up again. But we have to face the pain. We have to, we have to face at the end of the day where that anger is coming from and making sure that we are going to the root of it. And we're not just like chopping at the branches of the tree and that's not doing anything. we got to go and cut the root off. And the only way to do that is with Jesus. The only way to do that is maybe you do need to get some counseling. I'm all about some counseling, please. Like, I think counseling is the best thing. Some women need medication. I'm all for that too. Whatever you feel like that the Lord is needing you to have to walk you through this journey to where on the other side, you're going to give God glory. You see, we don't go through anger issues or beauty issues just for the heck of it. We go through those things to be a light because later down in the road, you're going to be a testament to somebody else. I believe that I had to deal with depression and postpartum and I had to deal with um, all of my weight gain so I could speak with strength that, you know, you can overcome it too because I did. I had to go through all of those things to have a story. And so maybe you feel a little bit lost and you're like, I don't want this to be my story. I feel your pain. I'm still going through a few things right now with people pleasing that is wearing me out. And I told Lord the other day, I journaled, when am I going to stop learning the same lesson over and over and over? The second I'm going to stop learning the same lesson over and over is when I start listening to Jesus. Period. So maybe that's you. Maybe it's you. So whatever, whatever your issue is, embracing your beauty and dealing with, with this anger and realizing that, that, that it's the lies that you've got to let control, let go of that control and give it to Jesus. But at the end of the day, we have to listen to Jesus and we've got to put it in action. We've got to listen. Sometimes we have to be quiet. I have challenged you ladies, I don't know how many times the last two years, to go find a quiet place five minutes a day and just sit, play worship music, read your Bible journal, something. But just quietness, just quietness. Because the Lord is speaking, but are you listening? And that's my challenge to you as we dive into chapter 6 and 7, which is savor your sexuality. That'll be fun. And then celebrate your friendships. And there's something really crazy about the friendship chapters that I'm going through right now that's, that's pretty crazy. So chapter 6 and 7, we're going to dive in deep, ladies. This is not, this is not your typical let's, let's get the surface and not talk about the elephant in the room book. This is a book where you dive in and get real. And so wherever you're at, I hope you lay your head down at night. Before you go to bed, I hope you grab your journal and journal a few things of what you're feeling, what the Lord's speaking to you. But I hope you lay down in your head at night and you repeat that scripture into your head. I, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. The Lord knew me when I was under the earth. And he loves me because he loves me because he loves me. And there's never nothing that you could do for him to love you less. There's never you can, you can do for him to love you more. He loves you because he created you. And you are so loved and you are so amazing and your purpose is clear. Your purpose is so clear. And Tracy, I think a lot of us get caught up in what's my calling? What's my purpose in life? I can tell you what your purpose in life. Your purpose is to grow your relationship with Jesus Christ. And as you do that, you're going to go on a beautiful journey. And it's probably going to take you to places that you never thought would, it, would ever happen or even existed. And so you just focus on your relationship with Jesus Christ and your purpose and your calling is going to just happen. Why? Because you're not focusing on making things happen or you're not focusing on what, what someone else's purpose and calling is, wanting it to be yours. You're focusing on Jesus, the one who is going to just, 
you're you're gonna be soft, fall so in love with him. You're gonna be so wrapped up in your relationship with him that your calling just happens. And so that's my prayer for each of you ladies. I love you ladies. I know it went longer than I thought, but I got fired up about the beauty chapter. You are beautiful inside and out because you are a daughter of the king. Y'all be blessed.